Hello and welcome to Sounds Heal Podcast. I am your host, Natalie Brown, and thank you so much for joining me as we continue to explore the fields of sound healing, sound therapy, and generally the use of sound for health and wellness. Today, our guest is Jens Zukar, or often in the States, people say Zygar. And I got to meet Jens at the Gong Summit in Connecticut here in the States a couple of years ago. And I'm sure everyone that was at that summit remembers his masterclass very well, extremely expressive. Um, he has so much energy and really a, a fun presenter. And of course, you know, he is one of the most influential experimental uh, gong players out there. He was also developmental in the uh, creation of the Paiste planetary gongs as well. So we learn more about him, his background as a performer, musician, and electronic music, and of course getting into the gongs, sound research, frequencies, and he really does leave us, I believe, in this interview with some inspirational uh, ideas about how to approach the gong as well. This podcast is sponsored by the Ohm Shop and Spa, located in Sarasota, Florida. They have one of the country's largest showrooms of crystal bowls, vibrational tools, and of course, uh, they have their luxury spa as well. So check out the ohmshopandspa.com to see what their offerings are as far as products, trainings, and other events. And, and thank you so much to the Ohm Shop for their sponsorship. Please enjoy this podcast with Jens Zukar. Okay, great. Well, Jens, thank you again so much for joining me. Um, it was great to meet you in person at the Gong Summit a couple of years ago. And I thought it would be wonderful uh, to introduce you to the audience and, of course, anybody that doesn't know you. So why don't we start back in your early years uh you know what were your what's your background where are you from uh you know anything that you feel was influential in your childhood when it comes to music and sound mm. oh thank you very much for having me uh first and yes the gong summit is a legend and i i keep on thinking and memorizing this it was a great time for me because it was somehow for me the first time that i had a that I was meeting gong fans, gong, gong friends in the US and, and the whole gong story, well, for me, it happened in, in Europe, in Northern Germany. And, and, uh, and I was very happy that, that uh, I've been there and, and, and met and made friends. And it made me feel that this global movement of the gongs is like a, yeah, it's a global one, it's one movement and not like, different opinions, you know, creating polarities. And it was very nice. Well, my background, what, <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, 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 probably the, this uh, alive of sound was somehow made for me, probably, because when I see uh, 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 like, like pictures of me being very small, I would, I would sit there on a piano and, 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 and the expression on my face, you could think, oh, he looks like he's knowing what he's doing something it looks familiar or i was sitting with the guitar and and and, and so somehow uh, sound uh, attracted me uh, like like ever since and uh, so and when i was small like like in my early childhood like from 5 to 11 my parents went to west africa so and i didn't live in germany at that time so very sure uh, it, it was a, a major impact on the uh, on, on the uh, say development evolution of my senses that I heard a lot of nat natural sounds, uh, tribal African music, and and well, this was probably a kind of unconscious start, but consciously. Uh, consciously when I went back to Germany and I went to a boarding school and, and uh, somehow this is somehow part of my story, I was in a very uncomfortable position of life. Like I didn't feel good there at all. And I didn't find a way to communicate well with my environment. Like I, uh, like I, I didn't 
realize like I was appreciated or I didn't feel that my concerns were taken care of. I was I was handled just one or you're just a little kid, a student, you have to do what we tell you, something like an archetypal of disrespect somehow. So and uh, so and then when I started to play guitar at that time, I realized when I play music, I can be in peace with myself. And even if the world around me is like trying to terror me, uh, I, I don't necessarily have to fight or resist. I just can be myself. So and this was a great experience, I think, or uh, that even today is I would yeah is still important. And 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 then and then at that time I was yeah I was playing guitar and and, and very early on I knew that gongs exist but I didn't have a gong ex experience when I was going to school I already knew the gongs from from Paiste I've been in the workshop at the spaces I've 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 seen them I even played them but it uh, but at that time the gongs didn't mean anything to me. Or, and I had no concept of uh, idea that I would uh, um, would do music, sound music with gongs. And even at that time, my concept of music was more like like cliches. Like you have rock music, you have funk music, you have classical music, and you have jazz music. And then if you want to play music, somehow you have to jump into these genres and find your way through it, you know, and and practice and maybe if you have a talent become even good in it and so uh yeah well and then through uh, I, I didn't really uh study guitar at that time i just played it like intuitively and so when school was over i, I think i was doing it pretty well uh, otherwise i wouldn't have ended up in a in a rock band so i, I was somehow professional musician from my first days on it wasn't a decision it just happened and then when they uh, and then it was a very successful quite well, i mean successful at that time I mean you have a record deal you go and tour people oh this is yeah and she's playing in a band i mean if you're young you're playing in a band you're on tour i mean then you're like in heaven of life right <laughs> you don't think of anything else so and then but but then what happened is that i had to a major change in my mindset of how I would look at music and 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 so this was and then this was actually the the real start when I left my my uh, my early years of being a, a wild guitar boy as much as I could <laughs> and and then I uh, focused my mind uh, to a vision of music that at that time did not really exist at all so this was probably in a short version my <laughs> getting into it right yeah so it was that the same time or or what sparked your um starting that research institute so what you know what was that that kind of changed you from the band and the guitar and the rock and roll to Sound, the sound research and, and going deeper into to that. Do you remember what it was that, that changed well, you? Well, uh, it was very clear. It was a, well, there are many words uh, like, uh, maybe that I, I don't, I'm not sure if I know the right words. Well, to put it very simple, <laughs> a voice spoke to me. It was a inner, it was literally a, not the inner calling because it was, it was very present. So it was not in, it was so loud that I, it was long, somebody like from above talking to me. In other cases, I probably would have thought, well, God spoke to me, but it, I'm not sure if it's God, but, but it was a strong voice and, and it's, it's, it was a caring voice and it was a, a knowing, or, well, I, I got some advices, right? And, and, and so this was, a, also for me a, a new experience because nobody told me about the options that voices would speak to you right and and so at the same time i studied these um, let's call it psychological phenomena at the same time and i joined a well a friend circle like they were really into it like researching like they had like um 
they had like like for example kind of meditation reading groups where they would have like christian or let's say not philosophers but not prayers but you know, like people that would read the bible and 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 would would then change from just reading it into speaking tongues i mean there are a lot of phenomena on 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 or, or you, can, you can even say realities right it's just a phenomena for those who don't who are not aware of it so however this was and and it was a very um somehow i got the well this, it wasn't really a, a, was it a, a advice like or it was it was a calling yeah there is another way uh, there's another music waiting for you that was the sentence that really struck me yeah and so um was that the same time you were you're getting into research as well what time of what type of research was going on well, at the the Klong house or was that later yes. well 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 um well honestly like the names that are used and what it actually is in reality so 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 like um so when i was i when i started completely from the scratch i mean i had a I had a basic education in, in, in natural practitioning, but if you would expect like a research institute where you would measure brain waves or you, you examine, you, you create studies, you know, these all these activities, what you would expect from a, a research institute uh, are very costable and you need a lot of funds. So in the beginning, my institute, it was, and the name of the institute changed during the years because i wasn't really sure myself what i what i'm doing but i had to do something and 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 so and they are and it was an institute for sound research yeah i had a it was an empty warehouse and it had it had a like a, a outside window and i have I, I still have pictures in my in my documentaries and so i just wrote Klankhaus institute for sound research i mean i just did it right and, and 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 so and and when i started it i did not even know how i should research it or what because there was not there was one guy around like he was um doing gong activities from the perspective of a jazz musician his name is michael jülich he's he, he's still around so somehow he was giving me i um the, let's say the first lesson in gongs but then for some reason i decided that i don't want to follow this uh, concept which was uh, based on thoughts of uh, integrale psychologie integra not integral integrative integrative uh, 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 structuring there are a lot of i mean later on i found out that there are a lot of disciplines and a lot of people come up with claims and structures and concepts and and then it's of course it's a matter of life success that you have proper proper marketing with your brands and 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 so it's kind of normal it's a process how do you establish your yourself so for me it was very simple my first research was so what's the effect on gongs on women what's the effect on gongs on men what's the effect on gongs on children and what's the effect on gongs on families so this was a very co simple concept and um and 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 this concept uh, was it was uh, well people came for the first two years, and I had all kind of experiences of people uh, uh, joining the gong experience and being a musician. So I was presenting the gongs in a I would say a musical kind of well improvised jazz way, but the intention was to create a. Uh, uh, to, to to create an atmosphere of of well-being, I would say, my intention was not to create like in a in a therapeutical session where, for example, you would encounter aggression or where you would encounter trauma to get the trauma out of someone. So it it did happen that people activated their trauma, but uh, well, I had a lot of ideas and inspiration, probably some some um, some good guidance very soon i realized that uh, one of the major aspect of the effects of the gongs is if you connect with a or, or, or if you reach a trauma which is emotionally or 
uh, uh, mentally in terms of the memory then in the moment you decide okay you open yourself to this trauma it might like vanish it might be solved which is a different strategy in psychology where you, okay what's the details where he was he standing how, and you know like getting into the details of the trauma so I, um, and so I, I came up with the theory that um, that the gong vibrations are well how, um, well if if this is exactly when you balance something then then you balance it then then it's not there anymore because the flow is balanced right so and I found this a very um, yeah, this was was my first re research result, I would say, and then uh, later on, uh, later the years, then the, then there was a uh, there was a another there were there were some steps in my let's say let's call it career or in my uh, in my story, and at a certain time, so then I moved from the clunk house, like I moved outside, and I've been with many many therapists and many. Uh, uh, self-exploring situations, assisting with soundscapes, and this was uh, probably for even ten years. And so from there, I got lots of experience, like how gong soundscapes would uh, work in, in let's say, psychoactive or psychological environments. Right, right. So uh, just a lot of learning through through feedback and, and through experience. The people exactly yes working yes with. yeah yeah now um you know so much of your career and development is th through the gongs can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with hans Cousteau, the you know swiss author and no. scientist and you know the, the the actual development of gongs and you know perhaps a word if you if you feel there's still some misunderstandings about planetary gongs just anything you kind of want to say uh, mm. about about that subject, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, it's 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 a it's a good question. It's a huge huge topic that 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 uh, can be should be could be strongly discussed. Well, first of all, um, like like I met Hans in the very early eighties, and this was like a game changer in my life for sure. So and 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 he was just about he had his first publication on the cosmic octave. He had it out and when I had it in my hands, honestly, I didn't understand the word because I have a, or I am not that much a mathematical um, mind. I'm, I'm more intuitive and that's, the, well, I'm sorry for that. That's the way I am. So, and, but I was very impressed and more than that, I, there was a very strong feeling that of, of sympathy and, and there was a very, well, we had a kind of we had a very strong relationship from the beginning on, and 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 I had the impression that the concept of the cosmic octave, which is the signs of the order frequencies of nature, is a it is like a game changer in the world of understanding frequencies, because so far there was no solid, there was no. Um, no, there was no uh, st a method or a strategy to like to sort out, you know, any concept of frequencies. You have this frequency or you have that frequencies, but where does frequencies come from? And what's the, you know, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, how to say it? Like the, the relationship to the fundamentals we are using in music. So what's the source for that? So it's a huge topic, and it uh, and and it took me many years to to feel. Uh, at least to feel comfortable that I dared to even public, publicly talk about it. Right? Uh, uh, and, and then but later on, uh, it was like maybe five, six years later after I met him, then there was this uh, initiation or of the planetary gongs, which I did with the, the, uh, with the Pi comp uh, Pisa company. And, and so because Hans at that time, he was just using the tuning forks uh, as to have samples uh, available of the frequencies of the of the planets, so and me being a musician, I did not really. Well, I, I still have the tuning forks from that time, but they're more like a an artifact on the you know like the temple of of of, of life. But later on, when they um, when the tuning forks changed in the way that they had these 
they this grips i don't know are you aware of the tuning forks and now these days they have these little grips now they're very easy to handle and they are very very mm -hmm. fantastic tool and i can really recommend everyone to you know to 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 to, uh, to to get the experience with that to start the encounter with that but so however then then the gongs came out and uh, and so and when the first gong set was there with planetary gongs then um, what happened in my life is that um, i teamed up with an electronic musician uh, like and before i was a sound purist i was like i i, I really disliked uh, I, I refused to share a stage with uh, electronic musicians because the sound they would create when they would tap the buttons or click, 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 you know, this is, this is, this is, was in the range of music for me. So I said, what kind of composition is it where you make click, 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 at, at least do it in the beat. <laughs> so, and then they, um, and as well in the beginning of digital audio culture, I was uh, I was uh, I really disliked it. I was writing articles that now this is the end is of music is here because like to to separate a wave into ones and zeros and you would not be able to count the upper frequencies the overtones anymore, which was very obvious for me and I was very clear that in the upper overtone structures you would uh, connect with the emotions that are part of any music and this are and these are the spheres where the inspiration would happen so digital music was very much a dead uh, uh, a dead image for me so and then but i met this electronic musician on the on the on the first presentation of the gongs and somehow my life changed and it was called the star sounds orchestra and we still and this was and I was doing this for 25 years and then from like what we did we felt very good with each other so we would you know go to the mountains and 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 go in a little castell and then we would play one frequency like for weeks and and so we got experiments so what how a frequency would um, would alter reality and I think still today one of the biggest misunderstandings is, or maybe it's not a misunderstanding, maybe it's a thought that still needs to be processed. Like in, in, in real life, there is no such thing like an isolated frequency, right? And so what is this frequency doing? What is that frequency doing? Well. If you, the correct answer, the correct attitude would be, what is this frequency doing at which time of the day, who is present and, and in which part of the country? And how is the weather like, for example? Because like, like, like everything is a very complex, very organic um, melting coming together of many frequencies and they're all happening at the same time. And now, and if you want to pick up one and say, okay, what is this? doing uh, you cannot tell what the frequency of the moon is doing without being reson in resonance with the frequency of the earth this is not possible so or at least it is not as simple um, as it is as you find it uh, in the uh, as, as you find it in many descriptions from people that i presume they are just taking care of their you know like economical life so you must come up with a marketing that explains what you are doing because people expect to connect with somebody who knows what he's doing so something how something like that so and the, the the complexity of frequencies and the complexity of sounds well if you for example want to uh, uh, feel I, I remember that the uh, 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 yeah, like 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 the, the 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 mercury frequency when you play it for weeks and weeks, then it is like you get a different overall taste in all in the way you feel things, you look at things, and but but you need to experience this taste for quite a while to to be aware of it, right? And 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 so and then get used to it, and so we added on and we added on, and after some years we went through all the let's say all the planets were done and we spent a lot of time with them and then we had a um, and then we had some ex very great experiences where we could prove uh, the different 
ways of or, or the different um, or the different situations where this frequency could do their job. Uh, well, we, we were on the TV show and it was a parapsychological phenomena. It was kind of weird show, but I could tell it was all true. It was all authentic. It wasn't cheating. And, and so somehow they were doing experiments like with psychic people. And, 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 and we could prove that when we would choose the right supporting frequencies, like the experiments, they would happen in a much, much, much faster time. So the TV company liked us because we saved them a lot of time when they had us. So and we did this. So this was a great experience. And yes. So, well, 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 well you, you're 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 leaving me out there in a in my history uh, yeah, on the planet yeah. on on the gongs. Uh, so so um, let's let's please try me to come down for a for, for a, a, another input from your side. But what I want to say is when the um, planetary gongs came out, um, like, well, it took me years to, to get to a, let's say, kind of solid understanding that I could present it. And it was my wish that I could also present it in like in the US. But it, unfortunately, this, this didn't happen till the time of the gong summit. And, um, and, and well, when the planetary gongs came out, it was the time before the internet, right? It was, it was, it was quite ahead before that. So, so our informations would spread in a different way than they would do it today. So, and um, if we look at contemporary gong culture, like what are major aspects or what have been influential, very influential aspects, then, uh, yeah, we also need to, to, to speak about, of course, about like Kundalini Yoga and an impact on contemporary gong playing. And all this comes together. I mean, today it's more or less one. And, uh, and we all have options to have any knowledge. And, and I think it's pretty, man, pretty much up for to everyone who's researching himself. And this is what I recommend, you know, do your own researches, go with your own visions and concepts and find your, your way through it uh, rather than believing what anybody's telling you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. A few follow-up questions from that. There's a few topics I can pick out of that. Maybe uh, let's start with, um, you know, the star sounds orchestra. It, it took you all over the world. If I was to go to a performance, if I, if I could have been there, what what was that kind of like? What was that experience oh. like for people? Oh, it was it was wonderful. It was it was a, so. First of all, all the planetary gongs. There was a full set of planetary gongs, including a, a special a, a sixty inch symphonic being there. So the whole stage was covered. And then there was this. Uh, there was my mate. Actually, he was a, he was a keyboarder with Tangerine Dream, which which is a, a legendary uh, uh, name in in German electronic history. And, and he was playing synthesizers and we had all the pieces were tuned to the planets. And in the beginning, we played very, made very spherical, uh, let's say ambient music. And, and for many, many, many years, we didn't do beats at all because we thought that all these frequencies, all the, the, the sound that were so fluid and so nice. So, so there was no, even at that time, techno started and, and, and many of some of my friends there already have been DJs in Goa, but I said, never ever, I will bam, 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 put the boom on, on the sound, right? And, 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 but then also this happened. And we, of course, all the planets not only have frequencies, they have rhythms. So, well, and, and then it is, we played on many psychedelic festivals, like the big ones, like the Boom Festival, or, or even, I don't know, a couple of times opening the stage or the Ozora Festival. And so it was like the purpose, like the, uh, the psychedelic uh, scene, they really, I think they appreciate this cosmic connection that they are, uh, well, felt. And, and, and so it was a, a um, we were never really a, uh, let's say, commercially successful band. We tried very much, but uh, it didn't happen for us. So we stayed some kind of underground. 
and for for uh, yeah for all the time we did it and later on we had singers we had dancers we were doing like a really a, a, like we were presenting it as a well as a ceremony show like you know so if you if you if you start a huge festival and you connect with the with the with the mother earth it's an image uh, I, I i love all these new age images because it gets people uh, it, it 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 stimulates the well the imagination of something bigger not just being yourself in your life with your tragedies and all your dramas but you are part of something bigger so and if we want to see something bigger so so uh, i you know let's look at nature so and and then and then so all these concerts were like very nice opening ceremonies as well as closing ceremonies and this is where yeah, and 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 then it was it was huge spectacles. I mean, just look, watch on YouTube. I mean, come on, there are it's a good documentary uh, uh, archive. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's so great to to see so many things uh, on your YouTube channel too of everything you've been involved in. And you know, you seem to specialize in symphonic gongs. Uh, what what do you find to be so special? What do you love so much about symphonic gongs in particular? Well, well, I, well. Actually, I like. I also like this. Well, I like any gongs. Not well. Well, let's put it that way. The symphonic gong is a very fair gong because it delivers the the possible spectrum that these are. It's, you know, sound is very much about physics, and 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 if you have like a like a gong and you you modulate it with I don't know, with, uh, there are different ways to to alter the sound on the gongs but the symphonic gong is from is, is for me the core gong it's the it's the basic of all other gongs other all other gongs are somehow aspects or variations you know they can be very very nice but they are the symphonic gong is the is the perfect gong because it deliver all the frequency in its range and also it's a, why a symphonic gong if you compare it with the chinese chao gong it is uh, very rare. I mean, some of the child gongs have very great bases and fantastic, but due to the way the material is worked out, like a symphonic gong has like a, you know, like, like, a like, like it oscillates in an absolutely perfect way. And a symphonic gong is a, it's not a, it's a statement of perfection. And if you use right. this, and if you use a symphonic gong, then 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 you have a. It's like you have a master tool, right? And 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 even besides, you know, like I mean, of course, there are different ways to play it, and 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 it's up to you how your preferences are, and and you cannot really fail. I mean, we had enough, enough examples. Even if you, you know, smash or bang a gong, you will have people liking it. So, so this is like, I mean, so that everything is possible, right? But, um, but the gong, the, the symphonic gong is, gives you, um, is, is, uh, is like a perfect tool. And if you want to experience yourself in, you know, like sound healing or sound relaxation, you know, then it's, uh, this tool serves you very well. Right. Yeah. That's a great way to put it though. The, the master tool. Because they are, you know, they are so complex, the range of frequencies that they encompass, that's almost uh, limitless in a way, what you can do with one well, symphonic gong, yeah. Well, well, you know, I I think that the, the world of frequency is like a, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, well, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a myth, it's an image. So I suggest everybody, you know, get a, get a frequency, uh, um, um, a, a spectra, get a frequency analyzer on your mobile. Today, everybody is so well equipped and can research. And you know, this, just everybody who plays gong and sh speak about frequencies, you definitely should have a, uh, a like a, a spectral analyzer, sound spectral analyzer, you know, and then put it in front of your gong. And then you will see right away that there are innumerable. Uh, frequencies happening there and 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 it is in a particular in a gong it is not even possible if you spot one frequency like even this frequency will be accompanied with peaks 
are close to this frequency. So it's a group of them. And, and, and if the peak is there, there are still a lot of other frequencies uh, accompanying this one. And, 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 if you want, and if you want a pure frequency, you would not necessarily choose a, a symphonic gong, a planetary gong. Um, at the time, the gongs, we invented the gongs, we, 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 uh, we, did, we decided for the symphonic gong to be the carrier for the frequencies, because still they would sound interesting. And the option was to use gongs with, with like bowls or nipples like tuned gongs, bossed gongs, but, and they are, they are, well, they are, they, like boss gong will never create a overtone spectrum that then a symphonic will do. So then for, for very, uh, for this reason, we decided for this symphonic gong. And today I'm not sure if I would do this decision again, because like over the years, a symphonic gong, a gong alters its inner structure due to the way it's played. There are, uh, so now after 20, 25 years, 30 years, I mean, I've, mean, I've heard so, so many gongs. And they, the, true is, the truth is that most of the gongs, um, planetary gongs, they are more or less out of tune because people would play them so strongly. Right, and and I, I only remember very 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 few gongs, they, they, which were still have been perfectly tuned, and these gongs belonged to educated mus musicians, who were very well aware of what they are creating. So and 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 there are some strategies uh, uh, there. I, I would not recommend them. I, I would not say they are suitable for you know keeping the character of the gong that you let's say you paid for or you pretend to offer in your you know like the nice thing is that people will still be enjoying it right and in the gong meditation it's very rarely that the audience comes up with a spectral analyzer you promised us a, a earth year meditation and now we have 132 hertz this is a fake meditation. <laughs> it will happen very rarely. Right. Yeah, and it brings it back to how how important is you know coming down to that exact frequency or not. And yeah, you know, it it brings me back to something you mentioned briefly. You know, what was so great about the Gong Gong Summit? I thought was there were conversations and discussions, and of course, you had people from all different perspectives, but it was all very respectful. And, you know, sometimes you can see in forums, Facebook, that there's some subjects that are quite controversial, uh, maybe even miscommunicated. Uh, you know, there's some misinformation out there. So people getting into this field and just trying to understand what's going on. Um, I'm curious your advice and really kind of your, your feeling for the state of uh, this field that we're in. Well, well, I'm I'm afraid I've be, I, I've myself I myself have been sometimes into it, maybe even too much, or I got over the point, or I got, you know, like then I lost my balance, or I got impatient in some discussions when you would like repeat again and again and again, and then I mean, how do people really communicate? What's communication like? And the 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 the, the art of communication. Right, is, I think this is one of the most um, important features of humans that we are able to and and we do anything to communicate well. And 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 if we are not, not if we have different opinions, then 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 it is through knowing and understanding what is the perspective of the other person and 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 and, and why is his interpretation that way and what makes him thinking it is that way. And and I, this is what I what I really uh, wish for the world to to develop more uh, uh, a culture of uh, a communication than rather at a certain point of falling into something fundamentalistic, you know, like and then separating the opponent and uh, even you know like I don't know the, the the best thing is get him out of the Facebook group, you know. <laughs> This is, but also this can be interesting, of course. And I found it uh, well. Uh, uh, they, uh, I have this document. I wish I had some 
some some some some, some so if this I don't know how it is in America, but in Germany it might be that the lockdown going is going on this winter, right? It's uh, it it might be that's an ongoing thing, and uh, so and and which for me means that I I, I I'm not traveling uh, uh, anymore or just I mean a little bit, but not the way I was doing it the last years, but for sure. Um, um, uh, I will not feel uh, lonely, or I, I will. I will. I know what to do. I really love to set up the this document that we all signed in the Gong Summit, right? Which is a document of communication, arguing on frequencies, and and some part of it, it's 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 almost like funny, you know, the way people could speak about it, or what, what exactly is the misunderstanding. And it's a, it's. I think it's a very strong document, and I really want to somehow. Um, I don't know, like even publish it or or give some more comments, because it's it's. I think over hundreds of pages, and these pages very clearly show all possible misunderstandings, and 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 what it is, and what it is, what it, what it's what it is, what what's it's not. How, how do you say it? I'm sorry. I apologize. To say what it is and what it is it not. How right. do you say? It? <laughs> what Sorry. it is not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is yeah. 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 So, so, so this is very, very interesting. And um, and and but besides this, like the signs of the cosmic octave didn't come to an end. I mean, Hans Kusto, he's still living. In in a few weeks from now, we will have a festival uh, that that we're having for ten years now. And all the last 10 years, like we have a special space, we, uh, academy that for Hans and his friends and they all gather and they exchange. And we have some young scientists, they work in, in, in Fraunhofer institutes. It, it takes very slow. It's not taking uh, the, the, but I mean, it's a very vivid process and it's an expanding process. And, and we have a new scientist, Norbert Böhm, and he took the cosmic octave science on another level by really uh, uh, pointing out the, the variability of the frequencies. So today, if somebody asks, so what's the planet, what's the frequency of planet Mercury? As I said before, you're supposed to ask which day, which location, right? Because it's, it's a continuous moving uh, process. And even the idea of these fixed frequencies uh, uh, is, is, is like a middle range number. Right, it's the daily number verifies, and and to have this precision, well, thanks to the electronic devices, and we are also having some apps we are working on. We have the iCosmo, we have many projects, uh, trying to 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 manifest these, uh, well, these ideas that you have sounds that are reflecting the status quo of our cosmic environment as it's presented with the planets, particular planet Earth, which is our home base in this universe. And, and if somebody says, OK, how, what's the, how, uh, how, do, how do you, uh, let's say it's a huge thing, what's the first step to do? And, and, and from my opinion, and I suggest this to all the students that want to uh, uh, step in, you please start with the first frequency that of relevance, which is the frequency of the Earth's day. The Earth circling around itself, not spinning around itself. You know, that, that these 24 hours, it's the first, it's the simplest uh, concept that mankind could realize that actually something like time is happening because when we speak about frequency we speak about looking at time this is because we need the concept of time of one second to identify a frequency but even if we think of one second this is already an abstract concept like like we do not know what if, if you say of one second yeah for sure it's over now but we cannot really feel it we can guess it right we cannot we, we can sense one minute, but we will never ever be able to, to tell without our tools. We need a watch to be sure when a minute is over, right? And even one hour is still abstract. So how do we divide time? 
and 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 but if we look at the uh, sort of but now from day to night is probably the first natural rhythm that we can uh, that we are aware or humans have been aware of but and then probably the next frequency would be the one of the moon because if you are now from day to night and then every night you see this this rock the moon changing its 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 shape its form and then when you look at it you realize our you 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 you, are, you will realize the the sky mechanics so if somebody gets into cosmic octave please start with earth day and moon and 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 go for it like like some people you know oh like like i i love my 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 setna gong i love my chiron gong this is a very abstract element in our setup and 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 from my perspective it is uh, it is well it is a uh, let's say it's a it's a made up concept that this is of let's say of any importance at all i mean if you give it importance it's fine for you you can give everything an importance you know we can we can we are free to do what we want to do uh, but but science is something else and 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 so and the science of the order frequencies is is the same if you if you if you if you want to if you study literature you don't just jump right into shakespeare right it's almost like it's really fascinating if you can understand it and really look into it but otherwise it's more like how does it make you feel why why would i choose this gong you know what what, what effects do it ha does it have um perhaps rather than if we can't understand exactly the the mathematics behind it well with the gongs i suggest if you feel good with the gong this is also you just you just go for it you know you don't you don't even care yeah this gong feel why what is it it's a, a setna gong well but Jens said i should start with earth gong well yeah he said this but if the gong feels good go for it you know play the gong but then you're playing a gong you have a gong experience and and they are and well um well uh i would i would uh, if you don't mind i would i would i would drop a uh, like a sentence for for like for gong playing like leave, leaving the the area of the cosmic octave if you if you don't mind so i find it so much more important to um so to uh well what to well if you if you play the gong for example there's a saying there's also i mean there's also like the gong is playing you I mean, come on, the gong is a physical object. It's hanging there and you're going to bang the gong with mallets. So, you know, you cannot get yourself out of the responsibility. You know, you're you're physically doing it. OK, of course, I know it's a metaphor. Yes, of course, I know. And, and I'm very sure that one possible one option of doing it is becoming a passive trance medium where you just give yourself away you open yourself and you make yourself becoming a tool for i don't know angels of god or whatever you know like you're, you're there are many options and they're all for sure possible so but to become a passive trans medium on gong playing definitely will not help you developing skills in gong playing so if you if you want to or if anyone who want to develop skills in gong playing from my perspective is that you create a very gentle a very nice physical relationship where you're like even mallets hands touching the gongs and experience the resonances that that the gong is presenting you just with simple uh, uh, encounters and then and then is and then you have the sound and this is actually the uh, the most important thing like 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 to to have the effect of a gong you don't need to continuously you know like bang on the gong bang on the gong bang da 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 da, da, da. is one one option to do it but you will never ever experience the feedback the resonance so when you when you play a gong blong, then you do nothing but you enjoy the resonance experience 
And if you enjoy or you realize or you sense this resonance experience till the moment where it disappears in silence, this is what, what, what creates sensitivity. Right? And then also, and then, and then playing it, of course, you will not only play it with the hands, with the mallets, but then, but then like, like a, it's like if you go into the holistic concepts, like every cell could be a storage for vibrational encoded informations. And if they can be become part of your sound information you deliver, yes, they can, but they only can when your body is resonating in a way that your body is opening up with its uh, resonances and connecting with the sound you're delivering. So, so, and how do you do this? And you, you don't do this with your hand in your pockets. You don't do this with the head looking to the ground. You do this uh, with synchronizing all the body experience on, on your breathing wave and, and, and realizing the exhaling, the pause, the inhaling, the climax, the pause. And then you slow down the process and in between you put some accents. Of, 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 of gong sound activations. And then, you know, your performance will be nice, your meditations will be good, even if they won't have been good before. I mean, you will, have, you will see what people tell. I'm so glad you, you, you said those very important pieces about connecting with your gong, right? It's not just about playing the gong, but I think you're so right. I think, you know, unfortunately, uh, People don't always, you know, it's all about the, the big sound and the, and the constant, uh, but there's uh, a necessity to appreciate the, uh, the sustain and the fade and to, to silence that happens. There's so much information there. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate. Yeah, that's what I, I would call it organic, an organic way. Right, like, like, also, like, if you have, I mean, I mean, just imagine there are different perspectives. But if the sound is like, like shaking, 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 you say, okay, wait a minute, let it come down, and then you know, you know, you know, make it organic, and 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 so, so I always suggest like a, like a like a professional gong playing, one moment gong playing, three moments of active listening. Of course, you can alter and change it, but but and you, if you're very good, you do one moment playing and eight moment, or um, um, let's say not playing. The only trick is so, and th this is the challenge. So, what are you doing in during the time you're not playing? So, where do you? And this is where it becomes a personal, uh, let's say, meditation challenge, because you are supposed to focus on the sound and to see how the sound that is vanishing towards silence is moving your your your, your touching your breathing wave touching your body so you really melt with the sound yeah this is this is this is how you do it physically this is how you do it energetically if you say oh let's be all one in the sound you can easily say it but you don't necessarily do it Right, that's a good comparison. I mean, it's almost like how you hear people teach breathing exercises or meditation, right? There's uh, like the counting or whatever it is. It's what draws you in and what you do in those moments when you're not actively uh, using a mallet. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for saying, bringing that up. I really appreciate how you just expressed that. Um, and finally, you know, what are you excited about right now? What are you curious about? What are you discovering? Uh, what new projects do you have or trainings? Just tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about what Jens is doing right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm, thank you so much for. I I really appreciate your interest so much. Thank you very very much. I feel honored by that. Um, well, well, well. Now we have. Uh, it's it's close to August. I think three weeks for our festival. Right and 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 so this takes of course uh, all, all all effort or focus, and then uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, I will be able I planned a uh, like touring in in Italy I have my yearly groups in Italy, and I hope somehow we will be able to do it, and uh, and then in 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 uh, well we have a a, a network we have one 
research project that's going on for years now. We have a um, uh, like um, um, we have a, a, a scientist in our network and, and, and he programmed a very sensitive EEG device where you could where you measure brain waves. And just the other day, uh, I will put it out in YouTube very soon. Uh, and it's amazing. It's a really the first it's, it's a neurofeedback device where you have the uh, what he does is he uh, measures the spectrum of all the frequencies that are happening in your brain and you can transfer them into uh, audio devices or visual devices with 400 MIDI channels. So you could actually, uh, with your feedback of your brain, stimulate sound devices. So, so and I'm connected with some electronic sounds and, 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 and so you can hear my brain playing electronic music or generating electronic music and at the same time playing gongs. So it's a kind of feedback uh, interaction. So I, I get myself more high and high and high. And, and so we had the first concert uh, a few weeks ago in Berlin and, and there are many. Um, so so the, the, and this is very open, many interesting uh, aspects. And, and, and so uh, uh, this, this is still, uh, it's, it's, it's already there, but it's not, let's say, for commercial uses. Uh, it's not, you know, it's still in the process of becoming, um, let's say, a product. But uh, uh, I, this is very, very interesting, well, for artists, for sure, because you can play uh, music with your, you know, with your neurofeedback. And together with the gong to make gong researches, of course, to see how, uh, for example, if you have a, if you are um, like all the, the sound healing treatments, like most of them, they are uh, pretty much intuitive, however they are structured. And the great thing is that they work. And this is why sound healing, sound music absolutely has a great future because it's so, so effective. And even if you do it more this way or that way, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, it still will work, right? It is just for me. I mean, I've I've been doing it for so long, so I I I, I, I it's I must have developed points of looking at things, right? And uh, but sound work is very very effective, and we have in November we have a. We have a, for the cosmic octave, of course, this is a huge topic, how to get more access to the cosmic octave. And we are working on a new app where you would simply type in your birth date and then it would uh, get access to the database of the planets at the moment when you, when you, when, when you were given birth. And then you can have sound that reflects this moment. So you can have your personal, let's say, live ringtone, or you can modulate it. You can you have your audionic signal, whatever you want to do with it. So this is like a, a something fancy that we really want to get out. And and and, and we have many ideas. <laughs> but above all, like um, I'm supposed to 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 rewrite or. Um, like like many years ago, I even wrote a book on gongs. I'm not sure if you know that. And it, it just happened in Germany and it's still good. People still like it, but it's not out there anymore. And for many, many years, I'm trying so hard to to republish it. But I had I have so many new chapters, so I feel I need two or three or four books. And and so there's a confusion on my on my desktop. I have so many files to check through and not speaking about so many audio data and all the documentaries from the last years. So this is something that gives me a little bit almost like kind of stress. And um, but, uh, but also the challenge to be uh, on the spot in the here and now and, you know, to be with people we are around with. I mean, just starting to we had a very good training the other day. And I think the most important thing is that people meet people and, and people are, when you meet people, you remind yourself you are human, you remind, you allow the others to express the feelings of being human. 
this is something I'm I'm so kind of shocked that it it's it's it becomes a rare quality these days. Like I thought we have we would have been so much more advanced by now. And but but it's a little bit kind of tragic at least here in Germany. So people are getting more um, more regressive. So how you say more um, locked in themselves down. And and you would meet more people that don't dare to you know like to get close to each other or to to and they they have no ways to express their feelings. So I think the way people are communicate this is this is this is our big challenge. But this is also what sound music helps so much, and and even and this is what we experience in so many situations can be with gongs it can be with singing bowls it can be with with chimes whatever you have sound music establishes communication between people sound music can touch the feelings and and also it's very nice to service for those for the practitioner because you're doing something really really great right you don't have to question what is the purpose of my life well if you are a sound musician you know your purpose you are serving humanity by by uh, 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 giving you know facility or by facilitating proper holistic communication yeah that's so well put that not only is you know this the sound work a method a way in to help to help yourself um, but it is such a, an important way to to communicate uh, to bring people together. Uh, gosh, it's just so, there's such a big scope and such a, a, a amazing way to help people and ourselves when maybe um, expressing, you know, with our, with our words is, is not as easy, but yeah, there is something, uh, even people that don't have musical experience, I think can really connect. Absolutely. This work as well. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, exciting stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean by uh, having so many opportunities and things you want to work on. It can be a bit overwhelming, but also very exciting. So I understand what you mean by that stress, but hopefully things just roll out for you as they should with, with everything going on. So oh, thank you so much, Jens. I really, really appreciate you. Um, anything else you want to leave us with before before we go? Any Any other mm. thoughts? Well, well, please keep up making sounds as much as possible, and also like uh, the uh, like people who are involved in sound practitioning, like like I very often find they are in a you know like in a service situation. They are delivering a great service, and sometimes they uh, it, it 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 falls apart that they should enjoy their sound as well right and and and, and people you know it's, it's it's not so important to really understand the mathematics or the history or this way or that way you know in the moment you do it really enjoy it tell yourself you're enjoying it not only allow it but go for the enjoyment and and surprise yourself with this you know like with the joy of being you know like happy Yeah, and just be curious, you know, just be curious about it, just be with it and be playful. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, well said. So, and, and, and then, yes, and then how do you do it? Well, in the moment you feel, a, you hear a sound, you feel a sound, you know, people look like they are practicing to die. You know, you won't, you won't see any emotional reaction. So, so, and this is the point. So when it's, when you like it, you know, Practice with your cells. Practice with your face that you like it. Use your body as a as a as a temple of life, and and all the sound music is not to space out. It's to 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 space in, right? It's not a drug. It's a vital force. And and all the spiritual concepts they are very nice, but it it's 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 most important is that you that the vibrations are nourishing your body yeah. right 
Yeah, what did I can't remember exactly what it was that you said right away at the Gong Summit. Was it chill out to chill in? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, chill out to chill in. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, yes. Yes. And then yeah, well, and I I hope very I hope of course that as soon as possible I will I will I really would like to come back and 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 meet you wonderful people there. And and it's it's a sound workers global community and I love the global exchange and of course you are all welcome whenever you come to Hamburg please come along I will take you to the to the gong builders or you know we just spend your time we are very happy when we have people visiting us and it's a pleasure to get you around and please feel invited anytime that's wonderful that's wonderful great thank you hopefully we'll I'll be again uh, together again soon. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your time uh, and all the uh, enthusiasm and passion you bring to what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Sounds Heal Podcast, sponsored by the Ohm Shop and Spa. And keep up to date with what's coming up next at soundshealstudio.com. Check things out on Facebook at Sounds Heal Studio. And you can listen to all previous podcasts as well as music meditations on the YouTube channel at Sounds Heal Studio. Be well and stay tuned. <laughs>